Parents don't realize that, that kids find their ways, can find ways around that, and I think consistency is, is what really um, needs to be stressed. But I, I think, I'm sorry, I'm trying to collect my thoughts here. What parents don't realize today is there's a lot of information that can be shared on Facebook and Twitter and MySpace just in the past couple of years that you know was not possible before. Twitter, for instance, now you can update where you are and what you're doing and have a live location attached to that. On Facebook, you can you know share all, they're getting better slowly but surely, but you can sh share all sorts of information about yourself and kids are eager to do this. And that really opens them up to you know, a predatory environment and among you know, adults and also among, among themselves, sharing photos and all of this. And I think it's important for parents to educate themselves um, about these websites and, and to, as I was saying, to stay consistent with their children and, and, and develop trust with their children, but also keep checking in and, and making sure that they aren't violating the trust. Um, and oftentimes, it's not just social networks you have to monitor. Social networks can provide gateways for kids to you know, share photos and, and other things via email or via text or, or whatever. So you have to, you have to you know, be, be a responsible parent. Um, but as far as um, the legislation goes, you can't, you can't legislate cyberbullying and all that away. Um, that definitely needs to be an element, but I mean, bullying has been around forever. I mean, when I was, you know, a kid, a very small child growing up, you know, the internet was just starting to come about, um, but bullying took place on the, per on the playground and, and all that it happens all the time. And how they would deal with it is if a teacher saw it or if a parent found out about it, you know, they'd step in and, and they'd uh, provide discipl disciplinary action within the school system and all that. Online, you can't do that necessarily. You know, you, you run into the problem of free speech um, and all that. So, again, that's whenever the parents need to step in. Now, there are questions of harassment. You know, you can you know, potentially charge harassment and all that. But I think... Uh, I think it's a very difficult issue, and again, it comes to parental responsibility. Now, whenever you're dealing with at-risk kids, uh, parental responsibility is not always there, and, and that needs to be, to be um, touched on. You know, not only do, do parents need to be encouraged, especially in low-income situations or you know, other at-risk situations, they need to be encouraged to be more involved with their kids, but also that's whenever the teachers really step in and, and other you know, people in the community who the kids are involved with. And, um, I think it's important to start young in that situation. You, you're not going to be, in, or you're not going to tell a high school kid who's an at-risk student. You're not going to say, "Oh, well, you may be at risk for, you know, sexual predators, or you know, you, what you're doing is, you, what you're potentially doing online is inappropriate." Here's a class. You know, we're just going to inform you. That'll solve all your problems. No, you need to start young and gradually um, encourage encourage responsibility and you know appropriate appropriateness that way.